Welcome to Whole CEO with Lisa G. I'm the best-selling author of The Boss Weight Loss. I'm bringing you the top tips to be unstoppable. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to actually pull up a chair with today's top experts in weight loss, mindset, and business. Learn our top tips to set you up for success so that you can have more energy, be fit and resilient, and feel unstoppable. Welcome to Whole CEO with Lisa G. I'm so excited today. We're sitting down with Lisa Ferranzo. She's in the fitness industry, working with diverse athletes and first responders. And she works out with clients in rehab from injuries like spinal cord, brain injuries, childbirth injuries as well as joint replacements. Her focus has always been to help her clients find their own strength and power from their fitness routines. She's accredited in Pilates, senior trainer, certified CrossFit instructor, certified kettlebell instructor, bar, and she has certifications in paleo, bachelor's degree in psych, master's in human behavior. Welcome. Lisa Pranza from A Healthful Life. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to get to connect with you. It's like, you know, you meet people and immediately you're like, oh my goodness, this person is totally in my tribe and totally. And oh. it's not just a fantastic name. Oh, I love the name. It's so awesome. Well, I know when we were chit-chatting, just like even off camera a little bit, you were telling me briefly about your experience where you were in the army and you shattered your whole foot. And um, I want to talk to you about resilience. So tell me about that story a little bit. Oh, girl, you like ripping the bandaid right off. And I'm so here for it. I want to jump right in. (laughs) I won't get into like a whole lot of the nitty gritty details. But basically, um, when I got out of high school, I went into Army ROTC, which is essentially a delayed enlistment into the army so you go to college first and then you serve your time in the military after you graduate college right so while i was in college i was on a training exercise and i shattered fractured and dislocated my right foot oh my gosh yes right like i'm at the point now where i don't have that reaction but it's been a number of years but it 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 was as severe as it sounds i didn't walk for nearly a year Oh my God. I've had multiple surgeries, a whole lot of physical therapy. Shout out to all my physical therapists. Y'all have a very difficult job. Um, And it really, it propelled me into the fitness industry, but it propelled me into fitness from the standpoint of approaching your workout as a means of finding a healthy lifestyle and healthy balance, you know, mentally, spiritually, and physically and learning how you could capitalize on your strength as a means of being super respectful to your body. I love it. Well, I know I want to talk to you about resilience and how how do how does resilience and being unstoppable start for you? Being resilient for me has always started with me. And a lot of, you know, especially when I first got hurt and everybody was coming at me with their different ideas as to like why it happened and, and you know, what I should do going forward and all of the, they had a lot of opinions on life and that was very cool. You know, whatever you're entitled to your own opinion. But at the end of the day, I knew that whatever I took out of that time and whatever I turned my life into was completely on me. Ultimately. Right. It starts with you. I love that. Right. It started and it ended with me. And I will say I was so blessed because I had an amazing amount of support from my family and doctors, physical therapists, rehab, all that stuff. I definitely was set up to be successful, but it still ultimately came down to me. And being resilient at the beginning of that injury was not something I was thinking about. Well, where did you put your head at? Like, how did you wrap your head into turning that corner, so to speak? In the beginning, it wasn't even in my thought process. It, I would be, you know, very, very transparent. I was grieving really hard and I grieved for a number of years. You know, you go from being very able bodied and knowing what you can expect from yourself physically 
to having that be completely changed within the blink of an eye, it completely changed. Wow. And it became, uh, I had to work through that loss of what I thought my life was going to be like. I was 19 when I got hurt, Lisa. I was like a baby. It was a I can't baby. Imagine. And you were an athlete. Yes. Yes. And I could have very well gotten stuck in that very, very dark place that I was in. Right. Very much. I will say I did get professional help. I did seek therapy as a means to help me move through those steps of grief okay. because I realized that I was stuck. Right. But I think the pivotal point for me was my doctor and my family kept reinforcing this idea of what do you want the quality of your life to look like? Right. What do you want? You know, I'm 19 at the time. Like, what do you want life to look like when you're 25? What do you want it to look like when you're 40? What do you want it to look like, you know, when you're 65? And, you know, even beyond that, how do you want to live? Do you want to be able to move? Do you want to be able to have a family and take care of that family and be an active mom right. and all these things? Or do you not? Right. So and the bigger vision, they kept you moving towards a bigger vision then. Yes. And then it was, how am I going to get there? So that idea kept running through my mind, but the actual practical steps of it were my responsibility. Right. I love how you took personal responsibility and you allowed yourself to grieve because anybody would have under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. Let's face it. I mean, failure is an inevitable in life and all of us have experienced it a lot lately in droves. So how do you address failure and continue to be unstoppable and fail forward? You know what? I don't really even view things as failure. I mean, you could have looked at my injury as like, it was, a, it was a point of failure or it was a negative point. I don't anymore. Right. I look at it as a launching pad. And I even encourage my clients when I'm training them, you know, if I'm teaching them something new and it, it doesn't, it's never going to go perfectly the first time. If I'm teaching you a new move, it's not going to be cute the first time. You and I both know that as fitness professionals. Absolutely. Right. But they don't necessarily know that. So I remind my clients all the time. It's not failing. It's showing you where your starting point is. I feel like if you know where your starting point is, then you know where you can grow from. And isn't that the point? Like I, w I want to be always growing, evolving, changing, you know, getting better at what what I'm doing, getting better at being a coach and being a trainer and all these things. Right. So all of that. If I if failure to me implies that I've given up and quit. And right. I'm not going to do that. That's the way I look at things too. I knew I liked you and I met you because it's sort of like the, when you can look at the pandemic and say, what am I grateful for from this pandemic? Mm -hmm. Even though obviously none of us are grateful for lives lost and money lost and jobs lost and the general state of mental health in our, our whole world right now is is really, I feel like a new pandemic, but yes. I feel like it, it's sort of a launching pad for a lot of us that choose to find the good in the horrible situation. Don't you agree? I totally agree. And you know what? It's It's been interesting for me because I remember saying at the beginning of the pandemic to my clients, you know, a lot of people are not used to being stuck around the same four walls all day, every day. And what that can do is exacerbate pre-existing things that are going on in your life. Right. You have no other choice but to right. look at it. It digs right. up our, our unconscious beliefs about ourselves from our childhood. Yes, it brings up all of the things. And for me, I already did the surrounded by the four walls. I was on bed rest for like, like a year. I, got I, had no like, I didn't have a choice. I was stuck. <laughs> I had to look at these things. And not everybody else has had that experience. My experience, I realized, is uniquely my own. But what I encouraged people to do was take advantage of the opportunity that you're given. Yeah. You have the time now. You keep asking for the time. Now you've been given the time. What are you going to do with it? Right. Because we went from that feeling that I feel like something had a shift in our society of we're always too busy. We never have enough time. We're so rushed. I wish I could do this, but I really don't have the time to now. Why don't you just do all the things? Like, yeah. 
you got the time. And I want to ask you, there's so much to unpack in your story. I love how unstoppable that you are and you encourage other people to become unstoppable. What do you do when you're faced with haters and how do you deal with criticism? Because obviously not everyone's going to get us and what we're up to in the world. I've learned to just let it go. You know, the, my vibe is not going to be everybody's vibe and that's okay. I'm not trying to be everybody's vibe. But the thing for me is I could focus on that negative or I could focus on the positive. I could focus on the person that I resonated with who, you know, DM me on Instagram and said, thank you for sharing this with me today. It really inspired me. And now I've gotten off the couch and I've worked out, you know, or the client who messages me who says, I've never felt like an athlete until I've worked out with you. I never felt like I was capable until I worked out with you. I never thought I could do the thing. I could focus on that. Right. And that's where I choose to put my focus. You focus on the good stuff and you just feel like, you know, what other people think of you is actually none of your business anyhow. So it's like, right. If you want to be unstoppable, and you can focus on you know, the haters because not everyone is going to like us. For sure. And low key, I'm also kind of like, well, the haters are taking notice. So I'm obviously doing something right. Yes. You know what? Any kind of attention means you're doing something right. I totally right. I love that. I absolutely love that. So what other advice do you have for my audience about how to be unstoppable? Ooh, okay. I'm going to give them a homework assignment. Can I, I do I, that? Am I allowed to do please, that? Please. I like, okay. I like practical I application of things. I want you to take out a pen and take some notes. <laughs> Come on. Lisa's dropping some value bombs here. Because here's, here's the thing. What I've noticed and all my and and beyond all the years of the fitness industry, I mean, I know it, we talked about how I used to be in corporate America as well. And this has always been something that's bothered me. We are so quick to be down on ourselves and negative on ourselves and forget that we really are. We're not just unstoppable. We are strong. We are capable. We are all of these amazing things. But when something doesn't go the way that we think, we are very quick to be critical of ourselves. Right. Yeah. Unjustly and unfairly so. So instead of giving some mindset, whatever, I'm going to give a homework assignment. <laughs> like it more. Which is write down a hundred things that you've accomplished. It doesn't even have to be like major I mean, it could be literally like I learned how to tie my shoes, but you I did do that. that. But a hundred things. And then when you have that moment of doubting yourself, of thinking that you're not capable or you're less than, which is something I'd like even less than anything else, <laughs> go back to that list and remind yourself. One of the ways that I do that, I, I have my list, but also... Whenever I get to be a guest on a podcast and somebody reads my bio, that's my reminder. Like, oh my gosh, I really did do all of these things. And I really have been able to help that many people as a result. And I'm really going to get to help that many more. I love that spin on things. I absolutely love that. And do you have any other advice about how when things happen that we don't like, you know, this happens in the world instead of being a four-year-old and going on a tantrum about just responding rather than reacting to those things instead of speaking that haterade and just being so down on yourself? Is there any other tips on, on Unstoppable that you can leave us with? I think that you are entitled to have your reaction. And when I say reaction, I mean, that's like the gut response. Right. But I think that you can have control over your actual response. Yeah. So after the reaction comes, after the reaction goes, you can have control over what you do about it. You are entitled to be upset about the, especially right now with the pandemic. And I realize, you know, everything has been heightened in so many different ways. You are entitled to be upset. You are entitled to be frustrated. You're entitled to be sad. All of those things. I get that. Right. But you can take that and wallow in it, or you can take that and do something with it. Turn it into something positive. Maybe what you do is, you reach out to your neighbor and you see if they need something. 
you know, maybe you plan something, you know, within the constraints of whatever your state is doing to for your kids, something to look forward to. There's always a way to find what's that saying? Like you can find the silver lining in the gray cloud or whatever. Yes. I love the silver linings. I There's always a silver lining. Always. I love that. I, I love that. You've been through it all with the Shatterfoot and being unstoppable. And um, where can people find you, Lisa? So I'll give two just easy, the website and then the Instagram handle. So the website is www.ahealthfullife.org. And then my Instagram handle is my name, which is at Lisa Peronzo. And the thing is, is that if you can't remember one or the other, they link back to one another, which is perfect. <laughs> oh my God. I just love okay. your attitude. I love that we got to meet, even though we met on Zoom and we're both in California. I look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank yeah. you for being on Whole CEO with Lisa G. Thank you.